Welcome back to Yahoo Finance. Well, culinary accolades are never in short supply for a gourmet restaurant, Le Bernardin, in New York City, consistently ranking as the number one restaurant in the country. But the last year and a half has not been without challenges. Here to discuss, Eric Wimper, Le Bernardin, chef and co-owner. Sir, I feel like I should call you maestro. First of all, congratulations on just being ranked the best restaurant in the U.S. and second best in the world by the prestigious La Lise ranking of the best 1,000 restaurants globally, fourth year ranked number one in the U.S. How do you maintain that level of excellence, particularly in the current environment when the hospitality industry has been so challenged by COVID over the last 20 months? You're right that it has been very challenging for our industry. However, we have a very good team, loyal team, and I think this is the secret to be able to have consistency and deliver a beautiful experience to, to our clientele. Uh, when we reopened Le Bernardin, uh, the entire staff from the dining room came back and we have in the kitchen, most of our team, uh, all the sous chefs, which are basically managers in the kitchen and so on, pastry chefs and, and, and my chef and so on, came back. So that team is very loyal and uh, that makes us uh, very strong. And of course, working hard and being uh, very vigilant with the quality of the products and so on, uh, that's, that's part of the success as well. And Chef, I want to get uh, your perspective on the ingredients because we talk with business owners uh, quite often here and uh, about the supply chain problems people are having. I had the chance to peruse your menu. It looks beautiful. I wish I had had lunch before I did that. But I'm looking at ingredients like black truffles, golden imperial, cap imperial caviar. Are you finding it difficult to get some of these more exotic ingredients? And it seems like you, you use quite a few of them. Yes, we have a... Uh a very big menu with a lot of choice. In terms of um, getting the products, it's not that difficult. Uh, we, we are getting everything that we need. Now, it is the challenge is the inflation. Products are more expensive um, because I believe um, uh, the difficulties of getting them in a country uh, and also uh, because it's less people working and, and it's a lot of uh, increase in salaries that creates uh, a big inflation and, uh, and that's where, where the challenges are. But in terms of finding anything we want, it's very easy. And, you know, so you're able to procure these ingredients and transportation costs have gone up. Are you then having to adjust your menu in any way to compensate or are you having to raise prices on the meals that you serve and passing that on to the customer? So what we decided to do is to raise the prices and pass it on to the customer. Of course, we absorb a little bit of the inflation um, because it will be too much of, a, of an increase on, on the menu and we don't want to do that. So it's a, a split in between our, our clients and ourselves and uh, we, we can basically uh, survive that inflation uh, pretty well. And Chef, I, I got to ask you about uh, curbside, street side dining here in New York City. It's been a very, um, I'd say, contentious issue. If you go to the village, uh, the streets are pretty much full of restaurants, uh, I guess, over overrun. Is this something that you support, especially in the long run, as businesses are lobbying, many of them, to make this a more permanent establishment? So first of all, Le Bernardin never did that because we are a luxurious restaurant and I believe that the experience is in our walls and not outside. I know that a lot of restaurants uh, did it because it was a matter of survival for them. And uh, it, it was okay during, during the pandemic. Now we are getting out of it. And I think those terraces have, um, have to stop because first of all, it's not very... Um, uh, practical for the clients. Even with the heaters in a, in a winter, it's very, very cold. Uh, when it's windy and so on, the food gets cold very quickly. And uh, so the experience is not really fantastic. Uh, and also the, the problem of those terraces is that it's uh, impacting the traffic. Uh, it's also uh, bringing uh, rodents in the streets. It's, it, it's, it's, it, has to, it has to go. 
<laughs> I agree with you. They have to go. <laughs> but uh, Chef, also I want to ask you, so many high-end restaurants, they closed for uh, part of the period during COVID. And you say that most of your staff did return. So that's a great testament to you that obviously you have loyal staff. Did you uh, have to pay them more to return? And then also want to ask you very quickly, you know, when you did come back, I'm sure it took a while for business to pick up. But now you do say power lunches are returning to the menu at La Bernadette. Yes, when we reopened, uh, we were at 25 percent capacity and that was a, a mandate from the government. Then we went to 50 percent, 75 percent, and now we are at full capacity. What is very interesting is that the power lunch is back. Uh, the dining room is packed every lunch uh, during the week, and we are packed at night. And also we have uh, a lot of private events, and it's a lot of corporations that have decided to uh, celebrate or to have some, uh, some uh, events with us, and uh, they are not uh, canceling those events. So this is, for us, uh, very good news. Now, our employees, when they came back, uh, we adjusted their salaries because it's an inflation and therefore they, they, they feel it as well. And we want them to have um, a, a, a good uh, salary that allow them to uh, live uh, comfort comfortably. So we, we did that immediately. Uh, from the very small salaries to the big ones, we raised, the, we raised um, everybody. All right, Chef Eric Repair, we will have to leave it there. Le Bernadin, chef and co-owner, congratulations on all your accolades and good luck with the holiday season. I know it is a busy period for you.